Hello, I'm Rachel from Duenza Garden in Ireland and if you're new to the channel then you're very welcome. Now today's video is all about sowing seeds in September, sowing flower seeds to be precise and in my new greenhouse. So if you want to see what you can grow now for beautiful colour in next year's garden then stay tuned. You are very welcome to this video all about seed sowing in September. Isn't that lovely and alliterative? And it's coming to you from my new greenhouse and we'll talk about that in just a few moments. But what I want to share with you today is the five flowers that I'm going to sow right now. So I will have glorious color, mostly next summer. And September is a great time if you have a bit of space like I have in my greenhouse to make a mess and to sow some beauty for next year. And the first thing I'm going to sow today is some hardy annuals. Now hardy annuals are brilliant plants that can take a bit of cold. They are annuals, they only last one year, but they pack such a punch in terms of colour in the garden that they're so well worth growing. And I've chosen some beautiful ones, although quite common and quite easy to get. And the first one is a marigold. Now I love marigolds, I love their glorious, glorious orange and this one is called Nian. It's a double orange calendula and we're going to sow that now and then we'll have nice healthy plants by springtime next year and just get a bit of a jump start on the seed sowing of annuals for the coming year. Oh, corn flowers, corn flowers. I'm also going to sow some beautiful mauve corn flowers. And this is a real trip down memory lane for me because when I first started out in gardening, you would not believe how many corn flowers I used to grow every year. It was really a stalwart of the garden. And yeah, I don't know why I stopped. And the next thing I'm going to sow today is Ami. Now, Ami is a beautiful annual with white puff balls of exuberance that look absolutely amazing. And some of you may recall when I visited Lismore Castle two years ago, they had the most magnificent army display down in their wildflower section. It really took my breath away and I determined I was going to sow army. Now, whereas the other two annuals, hardy annuals, can perfectly well be sown in February or March. The Ami is best sown in autumn the previous year, which we're doing now. It really does need that head start and I want to give it to it. So those are the three annuals. I'm going to sow two more things that won't flower for me next year. These are more a long-term investment in the garden. And the first of these is tiger lilies. Now, tiger lilies produce bulbils on their stems in August and September while they're still in flower. And if you pick and sow these tiny embryonic bulbs, then you're off to a good start for lots and lots of tiger lilies in two to three years. You can see here how the bulbils form in the leaf axles. And when they're mature, they come off easily. You may find that some of them even have tiny, tiny little roots. So today I'm going to share with you how to sow these bulbils and get your lilies off to a good start. And the final thing I want to sow today is a mystery packet of primrose seeds. Now you may recall I ordered a lot of primroses from a wonderful nursery in France earlier on in the year. And one of the things I also got was a packet of seeds from the shop floor. So when they pack up everything and send it off, there are always a few seeds that get fall down and they sweep them up and then they say, well, what are we gonna do with these? And they sell them off really cheaply. So it will be really fun to see what 
primroses I will get from this packet. Now primroses are best sown immediately and I should have sowed them when I got them back in spring but I didn't so we're going to sow them now. They are a seed that need stratification so autumn is the next best time if you didn't get round to it in spring. And just before we get on to sowing those wonderful seeds, I just want to take a minute to tell you a bit more about my wonderful greenhouse that I'm so happy to have. And this is a greenhouse made of polycarbonate from Organic Garden, who are based over in Galway in the west of Ireland, but they deliver and install anywhere within Ireland. And this amazing polycarbonate greenhouse is three meters by eight meters, which means it's a bit of a whopper. It's really well insulated. And I'm kind of thinking of switching over in winter to having the heat in this greenhouse which has more natural insulation than my glass house does and besides being really well insulated this is a tough old greenhouse and when the guys were installing it you may recall how they hung off these overhead bars just to demonstrate to me how tough and strong this greenhouse is it's a really good one if you have a windy site and perhaps never dared buy a greenhouse before because you just feared that it would disappear in the first gust of wind not this one not the organic garden greenhouse which i highly recommend okay i want to show you just a few features on this greenhouse that i didn't get a chance to show before so the door is split into two pieces and the top piece is able to open on its own now at the moment and all summer I've had the doors wide open and they stay open by means of this hook here and here you can see how easily it detaches and in that way you can close the door or open it again and reattach it via the hook so in spring you can have your door in this way let's just lock it there so you've got essentially a window here that you can leave open and just get a bit of passage of air going through. Now when you next see this greenhouse it is going to have a proper floor because the sand has just arrived and my husband is just about to lay the slabs, the sand first and then the slabs and it'll just make it a bit more easy to navigate and I don't have to worry about weeds or anything like that coming up so watch this space and thank you once again to the guys at Organic Greenhouse in Galway for this fantastic fantastic greenhouse and I have I've put a link to their website in the details of this video. Okay, let's go sow those seeds. So now I'm filling up my seed tray with a mix which is quite well drained. I'm using 50% ordinary compost and 50% horticultural sand. If you don't want to do that, you can just buy a seed mix. And I'm using a tray with cells as opposed to an open one and that's because I prefer the trays with cells when I'm sowing bigger seeds for the small ones like the primulas we're going to use one without cells. Now I'm going to pop the cells into a container of water and allow it to just soak up and get thoroughly drenched before I sow my seeds. And let's pop this into the water. For the ami, which is very fine, I'm going to use one of these open trays with no cells at all. For the tiger lilies that are Acid loving, I'm using a mix that's 50% ericaceous, and in this case, I've put perlite in instead of horticultural sand. And into the water it goes. First off, I'm going to sow my marigold seeds, and I'm going to place, say, three in each cell. Now, these are actually big enough to see, so that helps. 
Now the reason I place three or four is that one might germinate, two also might germinate, but three is probably a good bet. And personally, I prefer to have as little pricking out as possible. So when these seedlings come up, I can make a decision to prick them out and put them on into other containers, into other pots. Or I can decide that that's enough, I have enough, and just pull out the excess seedlings. And I'll top the whole thing with vermiculite, which is really, really good because it helps keep mosses and things from growing on top of the seedlings, but it doesn't block light. It allows the light to go through. So it really is a great secret weapon to have. Okay, and I'm gonna take my tray out of the water, empty the water, and pop it back in again. There we go. For the army, I am going to sew into these generic trays. I'm just patting down to make sure that the surface is even for sewing. And here I'm going to broadcast my seed as thinly as I possibly can. And this is obviously not thin enough. I'm going to have a lot of seedlings come up here that need to be pricked out, but yeah. Next up, we have our tiger lily bulbs. And these are already half grown, let's just say. So we're gonna sew one per cell and I will just have a look. And if there are any roots, at the base of the bulb bill, they'll place it with the roots down in the soil, like that. That one has roots, place it down here. Now with all of these, it's fairly clear cut which way is up and which way is down, but it can happen that it's not altogether clear and you're not quite sure what to do with the bulb bill or bulb. In fact, this is a tip for any bulbs. In that case, then you would never be wrong to lay the bulb on its side. It'll sort itself out eventually and it won't be the worst for wear. Whereas if you place it upside down, well, that's bad. And top with vermiculite. And last up we have the primroses. And this time I really am using horticultural grit on top. And I'm putting the horticultural grit on before I sow the seed. And this is because primroses need light to germinate, but yet they're going to be knocking around for a period of time. So I do want to have something a bit more substantial on top of them than just vermiculite. Okay, now we're gonna try to sew them. <laughs> and this is quite tricky. Right, so one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. I dried my hands, that helps. Oh, two went in there. <laughs> and just a little tip, when sowing mixed seeds. And these primroses really are mixed, so they're different varieties. When the seeds start germinating, you may notice that some germinate much more quickly than others and grow much more quickly than others. And good gardening practice is always to get rid of the weaklings. However, in the case of mixed seedlings, it could be, for example, that the red primroses are slower to germinate than the yellow ones. So if you get rid of all the weaklings, you're gonna eliminate all of your red primroses and you really don't want to do that. So you have to give them all an equal chance. 
Now my hardy annuals will remain in the greenhouse with their lids on until they germinate and I expect some of them to germinate within five days. Corn flowers are just so easy like that. When they do, I'll take the lids off just to ensure that they don't, well, they get more air and light. And then at that stage, I'm going to have to keep a close eye on their moisture levels because the lid isn't working as a closed system, keeping the moisture in anymore. They will go on to flower next summer and will fill all the gaps in my garden. There'll be no gaps whatsoever. As for the primroses, I don't expect them to germinate until next spring. Oh, the primroses are not going to stay in the greenhouse. I'm going to put them outside because they really do need cold stratification. And the temperatures in here during the day can be quite high. So it might just um, push them into a deeper dormancy. So they will germinate next spring. And I guess I will expect flowers the following year. As for the lily bulbs, they may germinate within a few weeks. If not, it'll probably be February next year when they come up and I can expect flowers for them from them within two to three years. And that brings me to the end of this seed sowing in September video, which I hope you enjoyed and I hope you'll check back to see how these seeds do. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye.